Hey everybody, Brian from Witch Doctor here. Uh, got some feedback from some shooters about some tests they'd like to see. Uh, I had one test was bullet run out. Uh, essentially it's that bullet, how straight it is. And uh, is it kind of bowed a little bit, bent, that kind of stuff when it goes into the case. Or I mean, when it goes in the case, does it does the is the neck a little bent and out of shape? Um, there was previous data that showed if the neck is a little bent or it's not concentrically, you know, a good concentric circle, that that is what makes the run out. Um, so, but there's no data on, well, that I've seen at least that has done a thorough test of whether run out is even meaningful and does it really make any difference on target. Um, so what I went ahead and uh, did was an experiment here to, to uh, as, as a, a series of tests that I plan to do, um, but I finished this first series and I'll go ahead and describe it, but to test run out um, and see, you know, how impactful is it under certain conditions um, or is it impactful at all? So first thing to note is I use bushing dies. So what I do is... Um, I will turn the neck, the brass on the neck a little bit. Um, if I don't need to turn a lot, I'll do what's called a clean turn, where I'm not really taking anything off the neck. I'm just setting it at the what the neck thickness should be and cleaning any small shavings off. Um, with good brass, like uh, Norma and Lapua, uh, I found it shaves very little off, but I do it anyway so that when it go, goes into this bushing for sizing, um, it, it, it sizes it perfectly and there's no imperfections. Um, so what I do is I do either yeah, a clean turn or a full turn depending on how much I need to turn off of it, um, if any. Um, and then um, grab my bushing die that I plan to use. Generally I know what neck tension you know is better or worse for certain applications. And then throw that bushing die in and go ahead and size the brass. Um, what I then do is I take my concentricity tool and I test to see how concentric the neck is. Um, using a bushing die in this manner um, has produced very little concentricity, um, super minimal. Um, I've used different dies, ones that use like mandrels, and I found they have a lot more concentricity than bushing dies. Um, have I tested formally on target whether that's meaningful or not? No, but I've just found that this system here where you clean turn or you turn and you use a, a good bushing um, really produces very little to no uh, run out on the uh, brass neck. So I just use this. This is now my standard uh, use. So that's the type of sizing that I've done with this full length with bushing. Anyway, um, then I go check the run out on the brass and it's usually minimal to none. I mean, you barely see the dial indicator moving. Um, but for this test, it's all about bullet run out. Um, and I already know, well, the brasses already have this minimal run out. So um, we're going to go ahead and just test bullet run out. And one thing that I did test as part of this is um, I have this seating die here. It's a Wilson seating die with a little micrometer on it. And um, you put the, you know, charge the case, put the bullet in there, and then settle that on there, and then use an arbor press to press it down. One thing that I have heard, um, I saw some, some something on the, I think it was Accurate Shooter or something, you know, well, if you press down twice, you get better bullet concentricity. And I thought, okay, well, so, you know, ever since then, I've been pushing down twice on the, you know, Arbor Press or other press that I'm using. But, <laughs> I don't know, I just blindly thought, okay, that's cool, but I never saw any data. I never saw anything to, you know, really uh, tell me that that is actual truth. So, I went ahead at first and just decided I'm going to go ahead and press, you know, once, take several bullets, press them once, take several bullets, press it twice, and see if there's any difference as kind of the first part of this test. And what I found in terms of the data was that run out if you press once is um, 0.5625 um, inches. Run out if you press twice is 0.525. So um, not 
And out of and I think I did forty presses, twenty with one, twenty with two, and statistically speaking, there was no significant difference between pressing down on the bullet, you know, once or twice. So again, it's just simply getting your bullet ready, pressing down once or pressing down twice. So I'm not real convinced that pressing down twice is going to have any major impact on reducing run out. It, it seems to have very minimal and statistically speaking, um, actually not statistically significant. So um, not sure that that's a practice that I'll be you know continuing here anytime soon but anyway so that was kind of the first simple part uh, the second part was uh, to go ahead after I seeded bullets to then you know measure the run out and so what I used is this uh, Hornady concentricity tool and um, you just basically stick the bullet in there and it holds the case in the back and after you stick the bullet in, you just twist the bullet, turn it, and then the little dial there, those tiny graduations are basically half a thousandth of an inch. So this bullet's run out. This came right out of the arbor press, pressed only once, is, you know, looks like it's a little over a half a thousandth, which is you know that's about standard you sometimes i get <laughs> bullets with almost no run out sometimes i get them with like a thousandths but half a thousandths seems to be the average again if you look at my data on that you'll see about half a thousandths of run out is what i'm getting here with my setup um, so anyway, so this bullet I would say is fairly typical with, you know, just probably slightly over half a thousand. Actually, it's probably about a half a thousand so now that I'm looking at it. So anyway, um, so what I had to do was actually produce run out <laughs> since, I'm, since my setup only gives me, you know, anywhere from zero to half a thousandths run out, sometimes 75 thousandths, um, very rarely one thousandths run out. I had to find a way to produce run out so I can run this test. I mean, uh, and so um, luckily this Hornady tool actually comes with a little device that you can create run out with. Um, I think the device originally was intended um, to correct run out. So if you had a lot of run out, you can then, you know, figure out where it is on the on the bullet and then orient the bullet a certain way and then basically turn this in and kind of push the bullet slightly and eliminate the run out. But um, for this test, since I'm testing run out and I'm not getting much, I had to use it to actually create run out. And so what I would do is, you know, kind of find out where, okay, where on this is like like you know okay so i'll stop on that side where it's kind of at the far end of the run out and then just slowly turn this in give it a little nudge and then sort of get the bullet going again and now look you can see the run out now is much greater we have uh let's see one two three four five we have about five thousandths run out now on that bullet um, and the system is, is you're supposed to, you can also correct that and reduce the run out. But anyway, so what I did was I created uh, bullets with six thousandths run out because I thought six thousandths is quite a bit of run out. I mean, I don't really know many people that are uh, really kind of have anything that produces more than six thousand. Six thousandths, I think, would be considered excessive to most competitive shooters, and they probably would not be using seating dies or, you know, um, um, sizing dies or high quality bushings that are straight. Um, and that would, you know, they're not going to be using stuff that produces that much run out. But I thought, hey, this is a test. Let's go ahead and produce a great deal of run out and see if it even matters. Okay, so let's dive into um, kind of the test method and, and the results here. Okay, so what I ended up doing was, um, you know, again, with all these tests, I use a, a very well-built Bentrust rifle. Um, I've displayed it in my videos many times before. Um, a Bat Nouveau action, you know, high-quality barrel, 
uh, great trigger, great stock, great scope. Everything is, you know, uh, spec'd perfectly. And um, so all the components and things like that are good. Hand swaged bullets, high quality brass. I've, uh, again, I've weight sorted my primers and I just use for all these tests, weight sort of primer. So I've, I've controlled for a great deal of variables here uh, in terms of, you know, uh, components and setup. Um, one thing to note for this first test is that the bullet that I used did really good when it was into the lands, about four thousandths into the land. So this is gonna be critical for you to understand at this point that this test is a test of bullet concentricity when the bullet is seeded into the lands. Um, there's a lot of people that would say, well, if it's seeded into the lands, then, you know, when it goes into the lands, um, it will center back up, right? I mean, that's um, a big reason why a lot of shooters like to shoot into the lands because they believe it centers the bullet perfectly and it's concentric to the bore at that point, And that's why it shoots straight. So, um, so yeah, I mean, it, you know, that is a valid and reasonable argument, but still, um, <laughs> I've heard valid and reasonable arguments and they carry zero weight. So I'm not the type of person that just stops and says, oh yeah, okay, that seems to make sense. No, I'm like, well, I also know that things that seem to make sense aren't actually the real explanation in real life. And in fact, science is full of um, falsified theories and ideas. And, uh, and in fact, uh, just about every theory and idea has been falsified at this point and or it will be soon. Uh, so anyway, that's why I run the test. So, so I went ahead and loaded a bunch of bullets um, and I knew based on low data that I had before that giving it a charge of 28.8 of N133, um, looks like I used a lot of 2018 powder, um, generally produce the least amount of, um, you know, uh, vertical dispersion and then seeding it four thousandths in, you know, produce small groups. So I went ahead and just loaded uh, several rounds with 28.8 charge, four thousandths in, and I shot with um, five shot group with bullets that were had zero to half a thousandths, one, maybe one thousandths concentricity, very little, very little uh, run out and got a really small one, a, a 0.1, almost a zero. Um, and so I thought, okay, I mean, I think I can just proceed with testing these bullets. Um, shot another group with, you know, almost no run out and it widened up a little bit. Um, and then I created two, you know, 10 bullets with two thousandths run out and, you know, the groups were a little big, three thousandths run out. One group was big, one group was quite smaller. Four thousandths run out, got a flyer, but the same kind of shape pattern and point of impact. And then six thousand, I <laughs> loaded up five with six thousandths run out and I got a small group. 0.191, it was the smallest group of all of these. Um, of course, if you don't count this flyer here, it's 0.158, but if you do count the flyer 341, I count the flyer, so it's 341. So interestingly enough, like sure, my, my two five shot groups with almost no run out, you know, on average, probably average out to, you know, about low two, maybe middle two, but then my one six thousandths run out shot small. <laughs> so um, I thought, okay, you know, um, hard to determine, you know, anything uh, based on, you know, um, eight five shot or nine five shot groups, you know, obviously you want to shoot more groups and get more data and that just adds to the statistical power uh, or the ability to detect a difference. And so what I did was I went ahead and again loaded up 28.8 Four thousandths into the land, and I just directly tested almost no run out and six thousand run out. I kind of just thought, well, I'm not going to look at two, three, or four. I'm just going to go big. I'm going to go, you know, almost no run out and then big run out. And shot eight five shot groups, four of each. And uh, well, um, <laughs> there wasn't a huge amount of differentiation there um, once you looked at sort of group shape and then group size. And um, point of impact, though, was slightly different, interestingly. With 6,000 run out, 
these three groups had a little bit of a higher point of impact than I think these three, but not not a whole hell of a lot. So, um, but it, it it seemed like there was a slight difference. But in terms of group shape and group size, statistically speaking, once I ran the data, um, no no run out, barely any run out had an average grouping of 0.2668. With 6,000 run out, it had a grouping of 0.2526. And that was not statistically significantly different. So uh, essentially, uh, you know, at this point, I don't think that <laughs> that bullet run out is, you know, up to 6,000. So of course, if you're loading more than 6,000, so there's something wrong with your components. You need to probably throw them away, take them back, or do something with them. But you know, hey, if you're producing up to six thousandths uh, and jamming your bullet, well, I don't think that there's, you know, any effect on precision. It seems like I got just about the same precision um, with with minimal to no runout versus six thousand runout. So, um, so it seems like you know that reasonable explanation could 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 hold some weight. I mean, there could be some other explanation going on here, but. Um, you know, anyway, the, the evidence is sort of supporting that idea that if you, you know, even if the bullet has got a lot of run out, but if you chamber it into the lands, then, you know, it all goes away and um, the run out, you know, turns to nothing and the bullet is concentric to the bore. So, so that seems to get some evidence here with this test. So again, this is a multiple part series, so I definitely will be following up. Um, with this by actually taking some bullets that I know do really well off the land and I'm going to go and actually test those uh, bullets off the lands and see where is the sweet spot is it three thousandths off six thousandths off nine thousandths ten thousandths eleven um, find my sweet spot so I do so I'm going to do some load development with these bullets off lands and then what I will do is this same test where I will um, create bullets that have a great deal of run out and compare them to the bullets uh, that have very little run out. And that will be sort of part two coming up. Okay, thanks everyone for tuning in. Please check out my Patreon page. Um, thank you to all my patrons. Your support is duly noted. Uh, I, I am getting to the end of the barrel life on my current test barrel and needing to get more and that gets really expensive. So. If you could please jump over to my Patreon page and become a patron and help me out, I would certainly appreciate that. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Take care.